My name is Ian Dennison, I'm an equipment specialist at GF Strong Rehab Centre and I'm here to talk to you about uh, cleaning a wheelchair. So uh, basically for cleaning the upholstery it's just a case of using mild soap and water uh, to wipe it down and um, finish off with water. You want to rinse out as much of the uh, um, soap as you can. Uh, keeping your chair clean makes it uh, easier to keep on top of rather than letting it get really bad and then having to have a blitz at the chair. Uh, water will not hurt it, the only problem is that you've got a lot of downtime while the chair dries out. So upholstery, mild soap and water. Um, the frame, you can use mild soap and water as well. You can also use a, um, a rag and WD-40, which as I've said before is not a lubricant, it's a cleaner, it's a solvent, it's um, anything but a lubricant. And just spraying a little on a cloth, wiping down, it tends to leave it with a little bit of a uh, protective layer and it does emulsify any food that you have on the, uh, have on the chair. So take your time and uh, do a reasonably thorough job of that. If you use car polish, uh, car wax afterwards, it does give it a protective coating and uh, helps to make subsequent cleaning a little easier. Um, the push rims, it's kind of nice to be able to uh, clean them and keep them fairly grippy for you, so I like to wipe them down with an alcohol, uh, just a rubbing alcohol, get it on the cloth rub around, it gets rid of any grease that came from your hands and uh, returns the push room to its original um, uh, feel. Any nicks is worth getting some uh, fine sandpaper and just smoothing down the nicks so you're not going to hurt your hands. If you're going to um, clean the, the, the rims, again a little bit of WD-40 on your cloth and uh, rub it until pretty well it's all off. You don't want to leave any residual that you can see that can gather any dirt. And um, then once you've cleaned the chair you need to lubricate any parts that move. Uh, and uh, The owner's manual will give you uh, specific locations of areas that need lubing. But typically your wheel locks need to be lubed uh, with a dry lube at any linkage. So anywhere that you see movement this linkage, this linkage and the movement actually happens here. So you're looking for a moving bit and a stationary bit. So that's the stationary bit, this is the moving bit, the black part, then you see another stationary bit here. So we need to loop there and between those washers and the frame. Right. And then here we've got a stationary bit, moving bit, stationary black bit relative to the silver bit there. So we need to loop in there. Um, this bit while it is moving, it's not moving relative to anything, so it doesn't need looping. Um, cast, uh, bearings require lubrication, but we talked about that in a separate section entirely. And that's pretty well it for a wheelchair uh, cleaning. It's easy to describe, it's not very easy to do. It takes uh, a while. You can armour all your tyres. We also find that um, if you use your tyres for grip when you're propelling, uh, cleaning the tyres with a mild bleach solution and then washing it off kind of gets rid of any um, shininess on the tyre and restores the grip that you might use uh, if you do use the push the, the tyre to uh, achieve traction. Right, so I'll move straight on to uh, lubricants. The lubricants that you may use with a wheelchair. There are a few, and it's worth getting them because you don't use them a lot. They'll last you forever, and the oil doesn't really go off. Penetrating, uh, uh, penetrating oil uh, will help to loosen anything that's a bit stubborn. Uh, it doesn't work instantly, so you can't spray it onto, um, say for instance, the, the wheel lock clamps, which are very good at getting stuck. You can't spray it on and then start loosening it off instantly. Spray it down the, um, spray it down the, uh, the gap between the clamp and the allen bolt. 
let it sit for a, a while. If you can leave it overnight, that's perfect before you try and loosen it. Uh, remember that um, if you do use penetrating oil, it's not a lubricant either, so you're going to have to uh, use an appropriate lube to keep it uh, working afterwards. All right, so that's penetrating oil. Um, axles. There should be no movement happen between the bearing and the axle. So you don't need to lubricate this so that it spins freely. All you need to do is lubricate this so that it slides out when you want to remove your wheels. Right? So that's all that happens. So every once in a while, depending on your, um, on your uh, environment, if you're in sand and water or if you're near the ocean, you may have to do it more often. Um, but every once in a while, if you find that your quick release isn't quick releasing as smoothly as you'd like, clean out the inside of your bearings, clean out the, um, the uh, axle, you clean it with this, this will help to get rid of any of that really black oil. Now the bit where movement occurs are the plunger and the balls. So that's where we need to lubricate because that's where the movement's happening. So inside there and the balls. Now the kind of lubricant I would use is a Teflon spray. Uh, it's got nice features in that it flows quite easily. It flows into the uh, mechanism. It tends to dry uh, and doesn't leave a film that things can get stuck on, or you can use graphite. Now graphite's a bit of a special lubricant because it's very um, temperature resistant. Um, oh sorry, no, the Teflon is temperature resistant, so it's not a big a deal. Graphite is very, very fine lubricant. You don't really need it for a wheelchair um, because it, it's used for things like watches and really small um, gears that um, the lubricant could get in the way, but the nice thing about it for our application is that it dries. The bad thing about it um, is that it makes a heck of a mess, right? It just makes everything black. But this will dry relatively quickly. The, um, the solvent that keeps it um, liquid and allows you to spray it evaporates off very quickly. You can see it drying already. There you go. So if you have that coat in the entire thing, that will stay in place when you put this on and take it off. Uh, one thing I would suggest is that you don't mix lubricants like I just did. Uh, just stick with one. I mean, if you're going to clean it off in between times, use alcohol and that will uh, dissipate completely. Grease. You can either use a um, lithium grease that has a, um, it comes out liquid, the, uh, the solvent evaporates off, leaves a thick grease, or you can use a grease gun, let's keep it a plastic bed because they always leak all over the place, and that's just regular grease, it goes in thick and stays thick. The only place you use grease is somewhere you can't see. So I don't want to spray it on the outside of my bearings, I don't want to spray it on my axle, I don't want to spray it on this linkage. This is not going to go where I want it to go. You would put it inside the bearing where you take off the seal, put the grease inside the bearing, pack it back on and then wipe off all the grease. Right? So you should never be able to see the grease after you're finished with it. Um, I also have a um, anti-seize. So again, these perennially bad uh, connectors, they're difficult to get off. Once you've got them off with penetrating oil, take them off completely. So put penetrating oil on there, and you're taking them off, put your allen key all the way in, spin them off. And if you do one at a time, you won't upset the uh, positioning of your uh, wheel lock. Take them completely off. 
and then put a little bit of anti seize on. I guess it's true with any of the lubricants that when you finish, you shouldn't see anything. Right, so the anti seize goes on, put it in there. The reason you need anti seize here is because you've got two different metals you've got an aluminum clamp and a steel uh, bolt, and you get galvanic action between the two, so uh, that needs to uh, be protected by the anti seize. Alright, so you do that with both, and you're free to go. So there's my graphite. This is a silicon uh, lube. There's no smell, it doesn't stain, it's water repellent, so if it gets on your upholstery, it's not a problem. If it gets on your hands, it's not a problem. Um, it's also rubber friendly, so it won't crack any, uh, it won't have any bad influence on any o rings or plastic components. And then this is just a, another type of Teflon um, lube. It's, uh, drop a dispenser instead of a spray on so you can be a bit more accurate with where it goes. So these will last your lifetime. This is probably about 20 years old and still half a can. So, okay, that's the uh, lubricants and cleaning.